Now you may be wondering which retro games you guys want to play next or perhaps you're looking to buy something really cool at the next retro gaming market when the lockdown lifts. So I'm here today to deliver five different games from five different platforms that you may have played, you may know very well, or you may have not played it at all. In fact, there might be a nice equal balance of played some, not, played some, not. So sit back, enjoy, because I'm gonna give you five retro games that you need in your life in 2020. We're starting simple with the Game Boy Advance with some Mario Kart Circuit. A game that was the first portable Mario Kart ever and looks fantastic by today's standards, not only on a Game Boy Advance, but when you get it on a backlit Game Boy SP. That for me are when the visuals really do seem to peak with this delicious Mario Kart. Now this, you may not know, um, was developed by Intelligent Systems, so it wasn't actually developed by Nintendo themselves. And I think Intelligent Systems did a fantastic job in keeping that fun, fast and furious spirit of Mario Kart. Because as I say, when Nintendo do kind of ship out their games, ship out their IPs to other developers, there's always that tension of, will it work? And I think it was worked and executed incredibly well. Now you start with 20 tracks, you can unlock another 20, and I just find the variety of those tracks really fun to play through. Even with the characters, everybody's there that's familiar. I do believe that the same roster appears as what appeared with the Nintendo 64 version of Mario Kart. And it's just a bunch of fun. And I'm quite surprised to know that a lot of people out there gave it a bad rap, but unfortunately, I respectfully disagree. I think it's a really, really great game. And like I said, Intelligent Systems did a remarkable job at porting such a valuable Nintendo IP across to the GBA. In terms of modes, there's time trial, you've got Grand Prix, there's lots of different things you can do, and you can play four player as well with the GBA um, link cable. I've never actually played it with four player but I suspect it'll be a barrel of fun. I have a cable and I have four GBAs, but if you've played it four player, please let us know in the comment section below what your experiences were like playing four player with this delicious Mario Kart game. In terms of what you can pay for it, Unbox you can probably get for around five to 10 pound depending on condition. Boxed I would say anything between 10 and 20. Again, depending on how complete it is, how mint it is, um, but you know, you can pick it up. I think Mario Kart Super Circuit is one of the more common games for the GBA and you should not have a problem in finding it anywhere. Next up then. I'm going to be dropping Banjo-Kazooie on the N64 as I recently streamed Banjo-Kazooie right here on my channel but through Rare Replay on my Xbox One and I definitely forgot how majestic this game really was and I was very surprised to see that there were people in the chat that had said they'd never even seen this game before so we played through and I loved it and I really need to talk about it today because you have to go and snag yourselves a copy. Now, if you're familiar with the likes and the mechanics of say something like Mario 64, so you've got your 3D environments, bright popping environments in terms of color palette, lots of polygons that work seamlessly together to create some fantastic animations, you'll pretty much have an idea for what to expect with Banjo-Kazooie as the same premise applies. Now we play as Banjo and on our back we have a little bird called Kazooie who also has different abilities that help us progress through the level. For example, there's lots of hills that Banjo might not be able to get up himself, but as you go around to the different mole hills to pick up your little tips on what to do, you are awarded the kind of Kazooie run. And um, for hills that are pretty steep, you just whack open Kazooie and up you run with Banjo as well. It's pretty gnarly, it's really cute. Um, I love the little sound effects that each of the characters make. And not only that, when you come into contact with other characters in the world that you maybe need to talk to for some advice or some guidance, they're also very cute. Now make sure you read the subtitles though, because they don't speak English, they just speak in some kind of weird syllable mash, but nonetheless you've got the subtitles there. So I think the characters are really great, I think the world is fantastic, you've got that 360 camera motion, looks really really nice, and I think there's also for me a lot of nods to like Crash Bandicoot. For example, you collect these little kind of like skull heads, and when you collect them it makes the same noise as this. Oh 
So there's lots of cool nods and nostalgia that reminds me of other games that I've played as well. And there's, I don't literally don't have a bad thing to say about Banjo-Kazooie on the Nintendo 64. Again, it is one of those games that's relatively easy to find, probably more difficult to find boxed. So if you're after like a quick copy, you're probably better aiming for something like an unboxed copy for maybe kind of 10 quid. Um, I expect to play 10 pound plus up to I would say 30 for a box copy of Banjo Kazooie but if you don't want to play it on the N64 you can always enjoy it on Rare Replay which I believe is on Game Pass if you are an Xbox One owner and a Game Pass subscriber um, and obviously you get the stunning HD visuals. Now some of the things you need to do in Banjo-Kazooie are incredibly tricky. You've got the double jump, you've got this kind of really high leap, you have to kind of go underwater. When you do the music changes, it's really, really aesthetically pleasing. Um, awesome different worlds, like you're on a beach, um, lots of kind of crab enemies and sharks. You know, th this game really does ooze eccentricity and it's beautiful and I think it's great to play it as a family as well if you've got young kids. Um, there's nothing that would kind of put them off playing it. In fact, I'm actually looking forward to showing my nephew a bit of Banjo-Kazooie when he is next round. So if you've not got it, if you've not played it, if it is not in your retro game library, do make it a, a priority for 2020. Next up then is a game that is probably polar opposite to Banjo-Kazooie. I'm talking, it's on the PS1 and Sega Saturn, and it is a game called Loaded. And it's very, very different to Banjo-Kazooie because it's very gory, it's very bloody, it's very fast paced. The music varies between some of this kind of almost fast techno to kind of deeper, dark, kind of metal-y kind of sounds. It's a very industrial looking game, whereas something of course like Banjo-Kazooie is much more aesthetically pleasing and charming. If you've never played Loaded, you can expect a top-down gun action kick-ass um, kind of game. That's a real, that's a new genre that I've made up, okay? Take note, that's going to take off. But again, we're kind of going into different rooms. There are six different characters to pick from, all different in appearance, all with different abilities from the start. Uh, some are faster than others, some, you know, etc. Some have like more health. And then you're going into different rooms, killing different enemies, collecting key cards, progressing to the next part of the map. You know, it can be very frantic at times. Um, you know, there's a lot to kind of take note on you know, on, on, the, on the TV. So for me, it's one of those games that you can kind of completely lose yourself in because there's that much going on on screen. You really kind of get that kind of, that glare, you know. Um, it's a phenomenal game and I've always loved it. I've, I really do absolutely love this game. For some reason, like I said, weirdly prefer it on the Sega Saturn, but again, you can get it on the PlayStation 1 if you're not a Saturn owner. In terms of price, these loaded is probably more obscure on the PS1 than Sega Saturn. I expect to pay anywhere from kind of 10 to 15 pound and upwards depending on condition as well obviously we know Sega Saturn boxes tend to um, break much easier than PlayStation boxes so you might actually get it a little bit cheaper on a Saturn um, but it's, it's it's definitely one you need to play if you're into your kind of action your eccentricity um, you know great I love the kind of neon color flashes and the color shifts in this as well there's some really nice lighting effects and um, the levels look really good so definitely check it out loaded again another one for your retro gaming bag this year next up then we're going to dive into a bit of a mega CD corker right now and that is night trap yes limited run did the playstation 4 release of night trap which did arguably improve the kind of controls the visuals things did look very very different and if you don't have a mega cd the good thing about this is you can play night trap on the playstation 4 if you wish but this is a retro gaming video so we're going to keep it real and we're going to talk it about it from the mega cd kind of perspective back then in the kind of mid 90s something like night trap used fmv full motion video which literally used real actors on the screen it was almost like you were watching a tv program at the time and so night trap was really really unique back in the day 
I don't think it's aged very well on the Mega CD now, I will say that. So you might want to consider getting it on the PS4. But the premise is actually quite fun and it is flipping difficult. You take the role of a copper and you're watching this house, which weird things are kind of going on. Teenagers have gone missing and you need to keep an eye on these pesky little teenagers throughout this house with the different kind of CCTV positions in different rooms. You've got this like little map. Um, you can kind of see which rooms are connected, which ones aren't as you're cycling through. You might be in the kitchen, then the bedroom, then the kind of hallway. Um, so it's like really, really cool. It's quite unique from its perspective as well. And then obviously intruders, they kind of come on into the house and you have to protect these pesky little teenagers by literally triggering traps so walls might open and swallow up the intruders or glass panels come down you know the stairs might kind of go from being a stairs to a slide and you'll kind of drop them into the basement but you need to be careful because it's all kind of timed you need to be if you're not in that room when an intruder comes in you obviously can't trap them so this takes a little bit of a playthrough it's a bit of a thinker because you need to know which which intruders come in at which time and in which room and then you've got to trigger the traps at the right time and it's really really awesome it's fun and i had a so like so much laughter streaming this okay through the ps4 but the retro vibes <laughs> the retro vibes were strong the acting is really cheesy but it's so cheesy it's kind of almost charming it just makes you laugh um i can hear the song in my head now what the, the there's a song if you've not played it there's a song that these these ridiculous teenagers sing in it and it's so 80s cheese ball but it will give you a laugh and you have to get it unfortunately there's a downside it's quite expensive if you get it on the mega cd my cat's trying to get out the room expect to pay about 50 quid for a copy and just bear in mind that it hasn't has not aged well so leave that one with you it is a must play if you if you've completed it make yourself known in the comment section below finally then a playstation one classic cooler world this was introduced to me back in the day through one of the demos. So I was literally just kind of played one level over and over again. You take the form of a beach ball. The ball pattern actually varies the more you progress through the levels, but you're on this kind of isometric puzzle platform game and you have to roll the ball around the kind of track almost and spikes might shoot out. You've got to avoid all of the kind of obstacles to get the key to then take the key back to the gate in the level and progress. Now, the levels become more and more complex as you go on, but it's a real thinker. You can all you can kind of flip the levels as well. There's portals, you get balls that can jump even higher. I mean, Cooler World really does take the puzzle genre and give it an extra spin if you would see what i did there that was so cheese bomb but it's awesome again downside it costs a pretty penny i paid for my copy a couple of years ago i think i paid 30 but i've seen it jump in price now to about 50 60 quid so you might want to kind of source the demo first of all and play it just over and over again on the demo because it's one of those games that I think you're going to really, really be into or it might not be for you. And that's why I wanted to bring it in because it's a little bit more niche. It's probably the most niche game on here. So it's a puzzle game. Your protagonist is a ball. You need to find keys, avoid objects on this isometric puzzle level that's played with obstacles, have fun out there and snag yourselves a copy of Cooler World. So five retro games that you need in your life in 2020. I hope you've took some value from this video. Out of the five, I want to know which one you guys would be interested in the most. I'm going to see you in the next one. But for now, guys, please subscribe. Consider sponsoring the channel by hitting the join link in the description or the join button right next to the subscribe button. Have a beautiful day. My name is Gemma. Take care. See you soon.